Yeah, I've been lazy and slacking on videos recently, I know. Anyway, hello you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite, and welcome back to another Game Maker 3D programming video. Why don't I ever, like, think out these titles before I start talking? Anyway, so, in the last one of these videos, um, I showed you how to make the camera walk around the world, uh, the player walk around the world, whatever. And in this one, I'm going to be uh, doing a little bit more with these uh, basic 3D primitives these shapes. I have already used the floor and the block and there are I believe four more. How many more? Uh, there's the block, the cone, uh, there's the cylinder, uh, there is the ellipsoid which is basically a circle, a sphere, a 3D sphere, and what's the last one? The wall. Alright, so I'm going to be going over all of these um, and also I don't think I really gave this much attention in the last video I did. It's not hugely complicated or anything, uh, but these hrepeat and vrepeat uh, parameters will just uh, determine how many times the texture that you uh, that you give the shapes will uh, repeat itself over the surface. So I have the block set to repeat once horizontally and vertically, and if I were to, oh god, if I were to go and look at that, you can see it lines up pretty well with uh, this wood texture. Each side of the block is composed of one of these shapes. If you were to say uh, go with two, that's that's the three, that's two, then each face of the uh, the block would be composed of uh, two of the wood pictures on top of each other horizontally and vertically. And you can mess around with that. I'm just going to leave it at one because it's easier to see. Cones! I'm just going to go down the list here because I'm kind of uncreative. Uh, cones! I'm sure all of you have passed geometry class, you know what a cone looks like. In addition to the texture repetition parameters, uh, cones also uh, have two more arguments for closed, and I'll make that true for now and explain it later, and steps, and I'll make this how about 12 for now and explain it later. And I'm going to run the game, and I really should move the uh, where the, the shapes are drawn a little bit closer to the camera so I don't have to like walk so far to find them. Anyway, this is a cone. You know what a cone looks like. Now, I should probably explain these two arguments. Closed, you have the option, let's put this a little bit higher in the air, let's have it go 68 to 120. So this face here, the bottom of the cone, and the telephone is ringing, I'll be right back. Why do people always try and call the telephone when I'm trying to record things? Anyway, this face here on the bottom, you have the option to, uh, to draw it or not draw it. Uh, if you switch closed to false, it's simply going to not be drawn, and you'll just be, uh, left, with the, you'll just be left with the inside of the cone. Alright, uh, screw it. After this, I'm going to go and uh, move the camera closer to the shape. And uh, yeah, the bottom face is gone, and you can see inside of it. You wouldn't be able to see inside of it if you had uh, back face culling turned off, but again, I'll be getting to that later. Now, uh, give me a minute while I go and fix this camera. Now, uh, getting back to the cones, uh, I'm just going to go and move this back onto the ground for now, because I think it's a little bit easier to see on the ground. If you wanted to look really closely, uh, how it's drawn. You can see it's not actually round at the bottom. This thing is actually composed of triangles, and if you look real closely at the bottom you can see where they connect. You can control the precision of that with the steps argument. Uh, if you were to uh, put in, say, three, it wouldn't look very much like a cone at all. It would just look like a, uh, a pyramid, really. So if you want to draw a pyramid, that's basically how. And if you were to increase this to, say, I think 32, should make it look pretty round. Uh, you may still be able to see the uh, the triangular faces with this degree of precision, but um, yeah, from far away at least, this does look a uh, like a pretty true cone and not like a, a bunch of triangles or anything like that. And if you wanted to go higher than that, say 80, uh, that should be more precision than you would ever need. But let's see how round this thing looks because I am curious. Yeah, can't see any triangles at all in that. That's how these two arguments work. Um, do be aware, there is a bit of a performance trade-off. Uh, the higher your precision, the, the larger number of steps you have for drawing these cones and other rounded shapes, the more processing time it will take. So 12 is usually okay for things that are far away. As you can see when I showed it off, uh, 32, you shouldn't really ever have to go higher than 32 unless you're drawing, I don't know, a really big shape that's really zoomed in or something and you might be able to see the... Uh, corners. Anyway, moving on, uh, that's the cone, the cylinder is next. 
And the cylinder actually takes the same arguments. And again, I'm sure you can uh, envision a cylinder in your head. It's uh, like a soda can or something like that. Except this one's going to have the texture of wood because I don't have a, uh, a soda can texture. And this is round. It's a circle on the top and it's a uh, basically a rectangle when you look at it horizontally. And uh, as you can see, this is not closed uh, on the top or on the bottom. No more Z fighting on the bottom. If you wanted the cylinder shape to be closed, you could set this to true. I don't think there's anything more to talk about with cylinders that I didn't already address with the cone because they're almost the same shape except that one tapers at the end and one doesn't. So, moving on, uh, the ellipsoid, if I can spell that, I'm not going to try and spell that because I know I can't spell that. Like I said earlier, this is a sphere and I'm going to spend a little bit more time with this one. Um, I just deleted some code and didn't explain it before in the game. Oh well. Uh, anyway, this is a sphere and it's uh, perfectly round. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. As the uh, the name of the function says, ellipsoid, not sphere. If you wanted it to be longer or stretched or something like that, uh, let's go and make this, I don't know, how about 64? And this is going to be a, a rather flattened sphere, uh, an ellipsoid. I can't even say that word. Ellipsoid, ellipsoid, ellipsoid. Uh, that looks rather bizarre. Yeah, that looks rather bizarre. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time playing around with the uh, coordinates that I'm drawing this at. Uh, this argument that I deleted. Ellipsoids have the same set of arguments that uh, cones and cylinders do, except for the, uh, what was that, the closed uh, option? Because obviously it doesn't really make sense for a, uh, a sphere to have a top or a bottom face or anything like, anything like that, since it has perfect rotational symmetry. Um, again, steps will uh, determine the precision and how much like a sphere it looks like. How much like a sphere, yeah, whatever. Uh, as you can see, I brought it back down to 12, and now uh, it's a little bit uh, jagged around the corners. And what happens, I've never gone as low as, uh, I don't think it's possible to draw an ellipsoid, a sphere with uh, three faces. I think the minimum is four, uh, geometrically. This should be like a uh, another pyramid. I've never actually done this. I should have tested this before I started recording. All right, so this is like a diamond. Uh, maybe my understanding of how Game Maker draws these things is a little bit off. You know what? Let's see what happens if I uh, if I do give it a precision of three. If I like blue screen or something, you'll never see this. Uh, and if you're seeing this well, I guess you'll uh, you'll be able to see what it looks like too. All right, so it, it's just going to it looks like it just has three um, faces on the pyramid and it's mirrored upside down and. I think the other one had four, and I think if I were to go to two, it would be just like one single triangle. Please don't blow up on me. I'm half expecting the game to crash. All right, so it looks like it's not going any lower than uh, than three. All right, wonderful. I'm going to bump that up to 32 again, because that looked better. I need to stop fooling around. Walls. Walls are the next one. And after that, I will uh, go back and talk about the differences between walls and floors, because they're the same shape. They're just uh, drawn a little bit differently. Uh, where is wall? All the way at the bottom. <clears throat> and walls and floors uh, just take the same arguments as the block. H repeat, V repeat, and that's it. And okay. You can probably imagine what a wall does uh, based on its name. But in a minute the game will start and where did it go? There it is. It's just a flat um, vertical plane like this. And Floors, again, are similar, but they're drawn slightly differently. <clears throat> and we shall see in a minute. All right, there you go. This is slanted. Um, the wall was uh, horizontal. Like I said before, walls and floors are the same shape, but they're uh, intended for drawing different things. Uh, floors, obviously, ideally uh, below your feet or like the ceiling or something like that. And walls are uh, more vertical things. I believe if you mess around with the... Uh, 3D coordinates a little bit. You can make uh, floors look like walls and walls look like floors. Let's see. Um, let's make that 500, 560 instead of 560, 560. Again, this is something that I should have uh, tested out. There you go. And you may notice that this is uh, the texture is sideways compared to what the wall was. Again, this is something I should have tested out before I started recording, but uh, there you go. The, uh, the screw, nail, whatever markings are on the side instead of on the top and bottom. So anyway, those are the primitive shapes. I'm going to return to a block and just, uh, I don't know, talk over the camera pointed at a block or something like that. 
because I think it looks pretty. Um, you may notice that you can't do a whole lot with these shapes on their own. Uh, that is not a block. Okay, you saw nothing. Uh, you can't do a whole lot with these shapes on their own. You don't have a whole lot of control over where their textures are mapped to, except for the H repeat and V repeat options. Um, if you wanted them to be backwards, by the way, if anybody was wondering, uh, yes, you can set negative uh, H repeat and V repeat values, and you'll just have uh, the textures go backwards instead of um, the way they are now. They'll be mirrored uh, left and right and upside down or whatever. Anyway, when it comes to more complicated drawing things, um, these shapes can be manipulated. So you can have this uh, a wall or a cylinder or a block uh, rotated and moved around and stretched out. And there is a whole set of uh, transformation functions that you can use for manipulating pretty much anything that you draw in 3D. And I will be making a whole separate video out of that. There are also, as there are in 2D, uh, you can simply draw a, a list of uh, vertices and draw your own triangles and create your own shapes. To be completely honest, I find those kind of boring. I'll probably do a video on these in the future as well. Uh, for now, all that I will say is that they work pretty much the same way that uh, 2D primitives do. They just have a z-coordinate and uh, lighting normals, which is for lighting, which is the thing that I will also probably be making a video on in the future. I have made a video on 2D primitives in the distant past, which I guess I'll link on screen in an annotation right now. Lastly, uh, when it comes to uh, drawing things in 3D, uh, what you're probably going to want to be doing more often than not are uh, using 3D models. Where is it? Model create. If you're not familiar with 3D modeling, uh, this will essentially allow you to create your own 3D shapes. Complicated things like buildings or statues or if you want to, people, NPCs, animals or whatever. Uh, they also happen to be way more efficient for drawing than these uh, basic shapes. If you do a lot of these, if you have a lot of uh, shapes, a hundred, a few hundred or so, uh, you will start to notice the game slow down because, as I have said many times, Game Maker is not terribly efficient when it comes to drawing things in 3D. And I guess going off of that thought, I wanted to bring this up earlier, but I couldn't really find a good place to jump into it. You should try to actually avoid drawing these 3D primitives as much as possible. For simple things like the floor or maybe the sun and moon, they're okay, but they are rather inefficient. And as I said a minute ago, using too many of them will slow your game down pretty easily. The other things I mentioned a little while ago, like drawing a list of vertices or especially 3D models, they will perform much better and you have uh, a bit more control over the way they look. But I'm just talking myself in circles right now, so I probably better stop. Next time, uh, whatever year it is when I make this next video, I'll probably be jumping into lighting and fog uh, to make 3D scenes look a little bit more exciting than they otherwise would. Although, I haven't really decided yet, there are a couple of the things I might do, like using models and uh, 3D transformations and things like that. We'll see. For now, rate, comment, and subscribe. I will have something in the description of this video that you can download and mess around with, although I'm not sure if it's going to be this exact thing or something else. And I will see you all later.